Okay, we're ready. Everybody, let's give attention to foods around the world. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us on our program this evening for another edition of Foods Around the World. My name is Jason, and I will be your travel guide for the duration of our trip. On tonight's special, we'll be taking you on a tour around the world, and we'll be letting you taste some of the finest delicacies from these areas. We will be flying thousands of miles to let you taste the famous pasta from Italy, a spring festival specialty straight from China, followed by a dessert from Peru. We will be presenting you with these foods from around the world, as well as some history of the dishes, some of the culture of the countries. These treats should be arriving on your party's table shortly if they have not already. The foods are being placed in front of you in the order that they will be appearing on this evening's show. Please take a moment to make sure that you have received all of the food. Also, please make sure to check the labels on each cup to ensure you will not have an allergic reaction to any of the ingredients. Uh, has everyone received his or her food? Okay, well, uh, well, in that case, without further ado, I invite you all to sit back, relax, fasten your seatbelts, and uh, enjoy your adventure around the world. For the first stop on our tour, we, we will be crossing the Atlantic to Italy. Please welcome our first chef, Elisabetta, uh, who, who will be telling you more about Italy. Thank you, Jason. Um, Italy is popularly known as Europe's most sophisticated destination. Um, Italy is in the South Europe region. It consists of a peninsula shaped like a high heel boot and several islands. Um, despite its rich, magnificent culture and architecture, there's no reason to be intimidated. Anybody that goes to um, Italy is warmly welcomed into regal houses, and nobody will ever be left hungry. Um, food is a means of establishing and maintaining ties among families and friends. The special food we brought to you today from Italy is uh, gnocchi. On your plate, uh, if you want to open up the dish that's labeled number one, that is your gnocchi. There's also some hand sanitizer on your plate, if you want to clean your hands. Um, gnocchi is a very filling and inexpensive food. It's a perfect peasant food. When you're short on money and you don't have very much food in your household, gnocchi is something that you can go and make and be able to feed and fill full. Um, it seems like every nation has some form of dumpling. Italy's form is the gnocchi. It's made with potato, flour, eggs, and it's a unique pasta. Um, if it's Thursday, it's gnocchi day. It's a tradition in Italy, um, especially in Rome. If you go down the street, you'll see that everybody um, has specials on gnocchi, and basically they've made it so that you can go and go into a restaurant and have gnocchi. Um, they even say it's a saying that the priest, the gnocchi is so good that the priest will end up choking on it because they eat it so fast. <laughs> um, the word gnocchi means lump or not, and just like most of Italian cooking, these delicious lumps um, are, do not, they, don't do vary from region to region, but from household to household. Um, as they, depending on what's available, it will be depending on what is in the dumpling. Um, sometimes you can have um, the potatoes, you can have cheese, you can have um, vegetables, anything like that. Um, what you do for the gnocchi is, um, I don't know if you can tell on it, there are some ridges which do help collect the pop on it so that you're not having to dip and try and keep the pasta sauce on. Um, what makes gnocchi so popular is it is very versatile, so you can change up the way you make it, change up what you have, and it's not just a pasta dish that you make. It can be a main course, it can be a side, it, it, you can do whatever you'd like to it. Um, to make the basic gnocchi, it is going to have flour, eggs, um, and potatoes and some salt. What you're basically going to do for the gnocchi is um, the best way that I make them is you're going to take the flour, 
and you're going to lay it on your countertop. This is going to be after you have already boiled the potatoes. I prefer to peel the potatoes before I boil them. It's just easier that way. But you'll boil the potatoes. You want to make sure they're pork tender, but not so tender that they literally are crumbling because then it's going to be the consistency of the pasta. Uh, from there, you're going to take the pasta, the, the potatoes out, and you can either use a ricer, which basically kind of mashes them and makes them into thin strings, or you can use a fork. For me, I just use a fork. There's no reason to have an extra tool in that kitchen. Uh, from there, you're going to take the potatoes that you've mashed up. You don't add anything to it. You put it in the middle of the flour with the salt, and you do throw an egg in there. And you'll start mixing with your hand with a fork. It can get a little messy, so make sure you've got plenty of room around. With that, as it starts to, as, you, as you've started to mix it, you will form a dough um, consistency. Once you've got that, you're going to knead it. You don't want to knead it too much because then it becomes puffed, but just enough that it's all mixed together. Um, the way that I do make it is you're going to make it into a rectangular, and you just slice it up in usually about two, two and a half inch wide strips. And from there, you can use a pasta cutter or you can use a knife, and you slice the, um, the dough up into small little squares. With each square, like I said, you have ridges on the pasta. You use a fork, you can use a finger, but you can use a fork and just make the ridges on the pasta so that they stop and they stick. To cook it, you're going to use cook it basically like you would cook any pasta. You're going to have water boiling. You add a little bit of salt so the pasta doesn't stick together. And you're going to throw it in the pot. I don't know if any of you have ever cooked ravioli before, but when ravioli is done, it floats to the surface. It's the same thing with gnocchi. When it's done cooking, it just rises to the surface. It doesn't take very long. It's about two to three minutes long, and then it's cooked. And they just pop up to the top, and you just pull them off as they pop up. You don't really need a, um, a strainer because they kind of just come up in fours and fives. Um, from there, you'll want to keep them warm until they're all done. Normally what I do is I just keep a nice warm burner going on the stove to keep them warm. And then you'll serve them. Now the different sauces that you can serve them with is the, you know, the traditional tomato sauce. Another way that a lot of people will do it is they do the pesto sauce, olive oil, um, butter, garlic. You can just make your basic stuff. Um, and then the other thing that you, you can use is pasta flavor. Um, so you cook the gnocchi, and then you put it in a dish and add, you know, your cheese and your vegetables and whatever, like a lasagna, and you throw it in the oven and you bake it. Um, I have a, sli a short um, slice, though, of the, of the basic way to make it. It is going to be a little bit different than what I did, but again, this is mostly what you would use for your pasta. How to make gnocchi. You will need two pounds of russet potatoes, two egg yolks beaten, one and a half cups of flour, one teaspoon of salt, pasta sauce, butter, and Parmesan cheese. Equipment, a ricer. Step one, bake the unpeeled potatoes in a 350 degree oven for about an hour until pork tender. Step two, let the potatoes cool until you can just handle them. Step three, scoop out the inside of the potatoes and discard the skin. Pass the potatoes through a ricer. If you don't have a ricer, mash the potatoes lightly with a fork. Step four, add the beaten egg yolks, flour, and salt to the potatoes to form a dough. Do not overmix the dough. You want your gnocchi to be light. Overmixing or adding too much flour will make them heavy. Step five, roll the dough by hand on a floured surface into three quarter inch rolls. Treat the dough lightly. Gently roll out the dough with your fingertips without pressing down hard or compressing it. Step six, cut the rolls into one inch pieces. They should look like little dumplings. Use your fingertip or the tongs of a fork to make a slight indentation in each one. Step seven, cook the gnocchi in batches, about 20 at a time, in gently boiling salted water. Remove them when they rise to the top. Then drain the water and place them on a platter. Step eight, Serve the gnocchi with warm pasta sauce or simply butter and Parmesan cheese. Gnocchi are both delicious and very filling, making great use of the few ingredients in nearly limitless ways. Gnocchi goes well with just about any sauce and can be served with basic pasta or a meal by itself. In fact, 
you know, two options still exist that there can be they can be a lower risk for Thank you, Liz. Wasn't that delicious? Uh, mm -hmm. Next up for our adventure, we will be leaving Italy, um, traveling east to most of Europe and across Asia, to eastern China. Uh, I'd like to present our next chef, Chef Janelle, to uh, tell you more about China. Thank you, Jason. I, um, China is one of the oldest countries in the world. music, visual arts, martial arts, and food are all large parts of China's culture. Uh, as we have in cup number two, I have um, a traditional spring roll. Uh, China is located in Southeast Asia uh, along the coastline of the Pacific Ocean. It's bordered by 14 different countries. Food is the center of social life. Most social interactions are religious based, um, even though there is no superior religion, it's a melting pot of religion. Chan Guan means spring roll in English. That's what we're eating right now. Um, it's like the egg roll, but it has more veggies and a lighter, flaky outside layer. Um, the spring roll originated in the Jin Dynasty, but started as a flat dough with vegetables layering on top of it instead of rolled up. That was called the spring dish. Uh, the spring roll, roll was named after the spring festival. Uh, this is the Chinese New Year, hence the name of the spring roll. Most important, it's the most important festival for the Chinese people. It's much like our Christmas, where relatives, family members come from everywhere, wherever they're living, and uh, they do a ridiculous amount of traditions. And, uh, practice their religion mostly during the beginning of the year. Um, the, the spring festival uh, originated in the Shang Dynasty and it falls on the first day of the first lunar month. Uh, spring rolls are eaten on the first day of the spring festival to represent people's sacrifice to gods and ancestors. Uh, this starts the first day of the new year. Fresh veggies, delicate flavor, light wrapping, and texture are meant to evoke spring. It is believed to uh, ward off disaster and evil spirits for the upcoming year. In some dynasties, eating spring rolls was called fighting spring, which means welcoming spring into their life. The preparation is fairly easy and can be prepared in many different ways. I will tell you about how I prepared them. It was difficult. Uh, start by chopping uh, your desired veggies for the filling on the inside. Uh, you want them like toothpick, so the carrots will be toothpick, matchstick, something like that. Um, you're gonna whisk together a marinade um, for your your meat of your choice. Uh, it could be any spices, anything that you desire. Um, you're gonna mix it with the raw ground chicken or pork. I use pork in mine. You're going to saute that chicken. Um, you're going to work, work with a little bit of oil until uh, it's golden brown and you're going to set it aside. You want to drain all the fluids out of the excess oil and the excess water so that it's not going to be a mushy, condensed nastiness. Um, you're going to wipe the wash clean after that and uh, stir fry the veggies that you chopped up. Um, I chose carrots, bean sprouts, white cabbage, and bamboo shoots. You're going to stir fry the veggies with ginger, garlic, and green onion, or any soup, like anything that you can just put on yours. Once the veggies are done, um, you're going to drain the water and excess fluid out and mix with the meat. You're going to toss the two of the meat and the veggies while you're adding in any type of soy sauce, uh, oyster sauce, or any like Wilshire sauce or something, whatever you choose to make, um, and you're going to like toss it together. Um, make sure you clean the insides down, the filling, and um, drain the excess fluids again. You don't want it to be uh, wet or mushy. Um, then the outer shell, 
I've seen that you can make them, but it looks like impossible to me. So you can find them at most Asian or Oriental markets. They should be extremely thin like paper. Uh, some people like to use two because they can rip easily, but you don't want the thick dough. It, it won't fry right. So you're going to pla place a clump of the filling that you made and put it in one of the corners of the square outer sheet. You're going to roll it in about three times and fold into the sides just like you're uh, folding up like a present or something, and then just keep rolling it. You have the excess corner um, where you can just tape it to it to keep it shut, but really um, the thin paper, if you just get your finger wet and place it on the corner, it'll stick just like uh, wrapping America has Americanized the spring rolls uh, a great amount where it's a, like pretty much the same size as the egg roll and there's no really, there's a fine line between the two, but if you do visit China, uh, the spring roll is about the size of what you guys have in front of you and the egg roll is a lot larger and you can tell the difference. Um, another thing that's different on the inside, veggies for more of a spring roll and more heavier thick meat that you can use in the egg roll. Um, so I'm going to show you a brief demonstration on how to cook the eggs for the spring rolls. It might be a little bit different than what I just talked to you about. One carrot, grated, six bamboo shoots, thinly sliced, some green sprouts, quarter of a ripe cabbage, shredded, some rice noodles, soaked in water, one tablespoon of oyster sauce, one teaspoon of soy sauce, one teaspoon of sugar, salt and pepper, one liter of vegetable oil, and one egg, beaten. I need the following utensils. Broth. A wooden spoon, a bowl, a spoon, a brush, a tea towel, a saucepan, a silver spoon, a tray lined with paper towels, and a pair of tongs. Step two, prepare the vegetables. Begin by cleaning the water. When hot, add some oil, the red pepper, the carrot, bamboo shoots, the cabbage, and the bean sprouts. Cook until the vegetables are slightly softened and the flavors have had a chance to intermingle. Step 3. Finish the filling. Now complete the filling by adding the noodles, the oyster sauce, the soy sauce, the sugar, the salt, and the pepper. Mix well. Take off heat. Transfer to a bowl to let it cool. Step 4. Preheat the frying oil. Place the pan on medium to high heat. Add the oil and let it heat through. Step 5. Make the spring roll. Place the spring roll back in front of you with one corner at the bottom so that it resembles a diamond. Brush the four edges of the wrapper with the beaten egg. Place the filling in the bottom part of the wrapper in a thin log shape, not touching the edges. Leave the last few centimeters clear. Now lift the wrapper over the top and tuck it in under the filling. Fold over the left side. Then the right side and roll it up to form a tube. Brush a little more egg along the top part and seal the roll. Repeat. 
see until all the rows are finished.
Thank you, Ash. That sure was some good food. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the treats. Now that we have visited the three countries of Italy, China, and Peru, and have eaten all the gnocchi, spring rolls, and flan, there's only one place left to go for the final leg of our, of our adventure. We've been flying north out of Peru back to our own local Melbourne International Airport. Uh, I personally hope that you've enjoyed these foods and the places we've been. How about a round of applause for our three wonderful chefs? Uh, My name is Jason, and it's been a pleasure being your travel guide this evening. Uh, please be sure to join us next time on Foods from Around the World. <laughs>